Short vlog today. Uh, been to work teaching all day. Beautiful little school. Love it. Awesome. Very, very cool. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about influencers. Which builders out there, have a think about this, which builders out there influence you? Um, who are the people that you see uh, building guitars and you go, wow, that looks really cool. I love how they do that. I love this, um, the way they approach doing that particular thing. Yada, yada, yada. So today I wanted to um, talk to you very briefly about guitar builders who influence me. Um, predominantly in this case, I suppose it's cigar box guitar builders. Um, uh, in no order of, huge order of importance. Um, okay, first ones first would be, I'll just let me grab this guitar I'm working on over here. Um, the first one I would say would be Daddy Mojo. Um, I saw Daddy Mojo years and years and years ago using string pins, acoustic string pins, to hold their strings down and regardless of which bridge I, 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 I use, um, with the uh, guitars where I've got the tailpiece at the back, quite often and more often than not, I'll generally use acoustic string pins um, to actually lock those in. So that's Daddy Mojo. As I said, it's in no particular order of importance. Um, headstock, as a lot of you might know, and I'm seeing more and more people doing this now, um, which is kind of moving me away from doing this. Um, I'm going back to, uh, possibly going back to a more traditional style of head stock, stock, such as this. I've been doing this for years and years and years and years and years and years. You'll notice how thick that neck, uh, that head stock is there. Same thickness as the neck. And doing this recess. Um, as I said, I've been doing this for years. Um, so I, there's, there weren't, when I was doing this, uh, started doing this, there weren't many people doing this at all. Um, but I didn't invent this. So I certainly didn't invent this. Um, I actually uh, borrowed this, borrowed this from a guitar builder named Malinowski. Uh, so you can go and check out uh, Malinowski on Instagram and you can check out Malinowski on uh, YouTube. He does some awesome uh, YouTube videos and etc. Uh, and he is just an amazing builder. He builds the, the, the craziest, quirkiest electric guitars. They're beautiful, beautiful creations. And quite often he uses uh, this style on his headstocks. Uh, and I do this on my electric guitars as well. When I do an electric guitar neck, give me two seconds, I'll see if I can find it. All right, here it is. So this is one of the electrics that I build. So it's a neck, uh, electric neck that I've built. Uh, truss rod down there. And you'll see the headstock is like so and so that was me borrowing that idea borrowing <laughs> that idea from mr malinowski um so but now i'm starting to see more and more cigar box guitar builders doing this so it's i don't know i'm i'm kind of going okay well that's all cool whatever <laughs> Um, as I said, I didn't invent this, but I'm seeing more and more builders starting to do this, so I'm going away from doing that. I'm going to go back to a more, I'm going back to a more traditional um, style of neck, I think. Um, now, another builder who's, who influences me is uh, a guy called Rod. I think he's a Scottish fella, and for a few years he was building some really kick-ass um, cigar box guitars that had fairly long headstocks on them. And he used to make the boxes, I don't think he used to make cigar box, traditional cigar box guitars. He used to make some really crazy kind of um, Art Deco style cigar box guitars, but he usually had quite a long headstock. And he used to put a, a hole in the top of the headstock there and put a piece of leather on so he could actually hook it up on a leather hook. And I quite like that idea. So I'm, I'm, I might borrow that idea for this guitar. I'm thinking about doing it. And the other thing is that Darren, who you know from the podcast, uh, and the group, Darren also puts little hooks behind um, his headstock. So he actually hooks has a hook system at home, which he uses. Um, I'm not gonna use the hooks, I'm not gonna do that, but I, re I like the idea of having a headstock thing with a little bit of leather on it or something. You can just kind of hang the guitar on the wall. I thought, why not give it a try, have a little look at it, see if I like the idea. Um, not every guitar has to be the same. It's, you know, just doing something a little bit different. Um, this particular one's going to have a 
Maranti, that nice dark Maranti fretboard on it. And here's another one of people who just blow me away and I love watching what they do is uh, our friend of the podcast, Mike Snowden. And Mike Snowden does uh, a, tension, a, a strengthening strip underneath. And for this guitar, I thought I might do the same. And quite often, I mean, it's just a slimmer idea, really, than that, isn't it? You know, then, you know, the, the, the tendon that runs through, this is, this is for one of the electric guitars that I do, so you can see how the basic construction of that. There's a video back further uh, in the group, in the group, not in the group, on the YouTube channel. Um, so I'm gonna do that with that, smooth that off. That's gonna look really pretty. I'm gluing all of this up today so I can fret it up tomorrow. Uh, I'm in between the guitars I'm working on, those last three guitars I've got for orders at the moment, it, things are drying, so I'm just, I'm kind of in between. So this is this is what I wanna do, which is the, the experimenting and the playing and the, and the designing different things and just having bloody fun with it again, you know? Um, so I'm gonna do that. So this will be a fretted guitar, and I've got this beautiful, beautiful uh, Shimmel Shimmel Panic Shimmel Panic box, which is beautiful. And this one's actually a timber one. I got a heap of these um, off a of mate, but uh, most of them were um, uh, most of them were actually um, cardboard. Um, and I've done a cardboard one, which I actually lined with plywood, and it sounds fantastic. So um, I, I'm definitely using the other ones. But this was, and this is very old. I think this this would have to be. This would have to be over 20 years old. Uh, I can just, just the, the timbers, there's a slight bristleness to it. Um, so it's had about three or four coats of um, uh, a water-based clear. Um, so it's it's gonna it's gonna make, here, check this out. It's gonna make, don't you think? That's gonna make a beautiful guitar. And this will be uh, an electroacoustic, so this will have a piezo pickup in it and a volume and and that'll rock. So anyway, um, who was that? So Daddy Mojo, we got, we got Mike Snowden, we got, we got um, uh, Rod from Rod's Guitars. Go and check out Rod, just check Guitars by Rod on Instagram. I'm sure it's that one. So, go and check him out, he's brilliant. Um, the other one, obviously with my dog bowl resonators, I will show you. All right, so dog bowl resonators. You can see that. Um, junkyard Guitars, I think it's Junkyard Guitars over in the UK, definite influence on this. Um, I love what he does, amazing, incredible. I spoke with him uh, a little while ago about doing an interview and then I went cold on the podcast because of work and because of commitments and all that sort of stuff. So hopefully I'll be able to get back in contact with him and have a chat with him as well. Um, they're the ones that'll, that come to mind. There are more. So I'm definitely going to, you know, and I, I've played around with ideas by Shane Spiel. I watched his um, episode last night uh, of his making the mandolin, which isn't a big musical thing for me, but it, it, it sounded beautiful, man. So if you haven't checked that, go and check out Shane Spiel's channel um, or Cigar Box Nation uh, YouTube channel or Shane Spiel's YouTube channel uh, to see that it's like 30 minutes and he really goes into detail about how he builds this mandolin and it's spectacular, beautiful. Um, he's awesome. I love Shane Spiel. He's absolutely brilliant. Um, so that's some people that come to mind. And, and as I, as I'm building and I'll, sh I'll show you how I'm building particular things and I'm doing and I'm putting things together. Um, I'm going to point out and go, yeah, I saw this guy do that. I saw this guy do that. I, you know, cause nothing that we do, here is a hundred percent um made up by us um don't be afraid of wearing your inf your influences on your sleeve um but the important thing i think the really really important thing is to pay it forward and if you have been influenced by someone don't copy their design don't copy it um uh, I had a, a situation, not a situation, but a, a, a thing happened um, uh, a few years ago where someone had bought one of my guitars and then built two more that looked exactly the same. Uh, and it was flattering, but it was the case of saying, well, you know, that's cool, but why don't you take what you got there and go and do something completely different with it? Um, so do that. Make sure when you take something, when you take an idea, use it. I mean, that's what we're here for. We're all, we're all here to share ideas. 
but do your thing with it. Make something, you know, make, make it yours. Um, you know, and because everything we do is, a, is an amalgamation of all these different, um, all these different types of um, things we do. The effects pedals are a really, really good example of that because all the effects pedals designs uh, that, that I'm using, these are all classic old 60s and 70s circuits that I'm, that I'm actually using. And man, I didn't, I didn't come up with those circuits. I'm not a circuit designer. I'm really, really, really good at, at, at seeing something and then being able to, to, from a schematic and being able to draw it out and then build something from that. Um, that's something I've seemed to be able to, have been able to do. But every time I do it, I try and change something. I don't want to do exactly the same thing. I, I certainly don't want to make a pedal, pedal that looks exactly like um, a pedal that someone else has done. So influences, use all of those, use all of those influences, you know, but make it, make it your own thing, make it your own trip. Anyway, that's, that's basically it. I think that's all I can say. And if you don't want to do that, you want to tell me to shut up, <laughs> just tell me to shut up. <laughs> that's all right too. Okay. So anyway, that was some ideas. Uh, that was me chatting today. I'll probably see you tomorrow with some other ideas, some things that are going on. Um, I've got to order some, I've got to get some pickups still in for two of the guitars. So they're not going to get finished this weekend, but they will be finished next week. Fingers crossed, everything good. So these are the last three orders that I've got to do before I just focus on doing this stuff and getting back to having fun again. And um, please, if you've got any questions, any build questions, please ask any questions you want through the Facebook group. Leave, leave any questions, statements, um, anything you want here. Um, you know, just say hi if you want to say hi. Um, tell your friends um, about, the, about the podcast, about the YouTube channel as well if you're enjoying it. Um, that would be really, really cool. Uh, as I said, there is a Patreon, but man, it's like the Patreon's there. If you want to support the channel the, and, the, and the podcast, then please do. But if you, don't, if you can't support it financially... Man, I have no problem with that at all. But tell your friends about the channel. Let's, I want to try and crack a thousand, uh, a thousand views in the next week, uh, a thousand uh, subscribers to this YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to be focusing like 99.9% .9 of my attention on teaching cigar box guitar building tips and things like that from now on, not necessarily just selling stuff, um, which is, this is what I really love doing. So my heart feels good here. So anyway, um, it's cold. I'm freezing. <laughs> So I'm going to glue these up and I'm going to go upstairs into where it's cold. I've got, I've got a fire started. So, uh, yeah, it's bloody cold. So anyway, look, have a great night. It's been 30 minutes of me rambling. So take care.